welcome back. I owe you all a homestead update. So let me take you around the property and show you what has changed now that it's spring. All of the bulbs that I planted in December have bloomed and honestly, the tulips are on their way out. The hyacinth came and went. It was very short lived. And the daffodils I think will last a little while longer. So I'll show you a little bit more of a close up. Tulips were a fun new experiment for me. I had never really played around with growing these. And they are very pretty, but honestly, I don't think they're my favorite. The daffodils are pretty though and longer lasting, so I think I might do a few more of these next year. As for the ranunculus that I planted over here, they really haven't done much. And ranunculus is also new to me. This is the first year that I've successfully pre-sprouted them with all the rotting. They don't love warm weather, so I'll see if they do anything. If not, I will have learned how to not grow ranunculus and I can learn from that experience. But the anemones over here are doing great. They're really starting to bloom now and most of the stems are still pretty short. But some of them are pretty tall and nice for cutting. I have some peony bushes that I threw in last year and those are starting to think about blooming which is exciting. You can even see the ants starting to farm the sap or the nectar from the buds. These are all different kinds and the chickens pulled out the labels so I'll just have to wait to see what they are until they bloom. I also have some younger less established ones around this ginkgo tree right here and this mess of a bed right here will be peonies and obviously I need to do some weeding maintenance on this bed. And I still have two flower beds right here to fill with some perennial flower starts that I have going inside but it's not quite time for that yet because the leaves and things that I put in here haven't really fully decomposed yet. What's underneath looks better than the top, but I might have to import some soil to get that planted out this year. We'll see. And I have gotten several questions about Athena and the lambs, so let me give you an update on them. Athena is getting so much bigger. She's almost as big as Copper now. And they're buddies. They like to hang out and play. She is very much not a guardian dog right now. She has become really closely bonded with Copper and pretty closely bonded with me. And so it remains to be seen whether she will be a full true livestock guardian dog or not. She's a puppy and so she is going to be more clingy right now. And honestly, if we can just get to the point where once she's older, she sleeps outside, I would be really happy with that. I wasn't planning to have another house dog, especially a Great Pyrenees house dog and a small house, but we'll roll with it. The lambs are still down here by the house. They're still getting bottle fed. They're almost eight weeks, so I'll start weaning them soon. And I decided which one is going to be the ram and which one's going to be the weather. This one right here, Rocky, is half St. Croix, half East Frisian. He's gonna be the weather. And this one right here, his name is Cam. He'll be Cam the ram. He is all East Frisian. Their breeds did factor heavily into that decision. If it were purely based off of personality and temperament, it would probably be reversed because Rocky is very sweet, mostly calm, and Cam is fine, just a little bit more insistent on getting attention or whatever it is that he wants. But because East Frisians are really a triple purpose breed, they are for wool, meat, and milk. I really don't want to introduce the hair sheep element of the St. Croix into the lambs that I have. I don't have the space to keep the lambs, so I'll be selling them, and it is exponentially easier to sell lambs that are not, for lack of a better word, mutts <laughs> for lambs that you can identify one breed, tell people, hey, it's this, the St. Croix genetics are not all bad. If I really wanted to set up a breeding program and make my sheep more parasite resistant, there would be an argument for using Rocky as the ram. But that's just not where I'm at. That's not what I want. That's not what works for me. And so Cam is gonna be my ram. One last thing down by the house, it's over by the creek. I am trying to establish a living willow fence, which is a cool project that's totally new to me. I got a whole bunch of these small French pussy willow cuttings and I put them in the ground in a lattice pattern. And obviously they're very small. They are not a fence right now, but as they grow, I'll weave them together and in 
I don't know, a handful of years, this will actually look like a fence but be made out of willow cuttings. It's something that I can cut off of for cut flowers and it'll be aesthetic and hopefully also functional. So fingers crossed that it turns out well. I'll just have to be patient and see. And then up in the pasture, I have everyone back in their warm weather rotational setup. Both the sheep and the chickens are officially out of the garden because I need to start putting things back in the garden. It's been a little bit longer than a month since I threw some supplemental seed down on the pasture to try to interseed, get some new grass species in here, try to fix some of the bald spots that the chickens scratched up. And so it's just time to get everybody back out here where they want to be and I want them to be. I did also shear the sheep a few weeks ago, so they look a little naked. <laughs> I did the shearing myself, and honestly, I didn't film it because I wanted to be able to focus on what I was doing so that I didn't put them in an unnecessarily stressful situation, put myself in an unnecessarily stressful situation and make sure that it was done safe because it is clippers, you can hurt them, and that can turn into a bigger deal. So I just wanted to focus and maybe, maybe next time I can show you guys. Their wool will go to good use though some of the wool was spoiled as in not sanitary so the wool that can't be used for fun projects I just used to mulch trees and things where it's not gonna be a health hazard and the rest of it I'm not totally sure what I'm gonna use it for yet I can use it for insulation for the beehives I can use it for insulation for future renovations on the house there's a lot of options and so I'm just gonna keep it on hand and use it when I need it. As far as the chickens go, I might need to start clipping wings soon because there is a rebel crew who tends to escape this net. They fly over and then they rummage around the pasture and every once in a while when a neighbor's cat gets curious and comes in here, they fall victim to that cat. So clipping wings <laughs> is it's a whole event, so I tend to not do it unless I absolutely need to. So it might just be a matter of catching the chickens that get out and clipping their wings instead of clipping 40 to 46 wings. And most of the pasture trees are actually fenced now, thanks to my dad. He took the time to drive these T-posts, take some fencing, wrap it around, zip tie it, and so they are safe from the sheep. And because this is a cherry tree, the sheep are safe from it. The peaches and nectarines bloomed a while ago. This cherry tree is just starting to bloom. And I've noticed a handful of blossoms on some of the apple trees that I have spread around. And I do actually have a few things in the garden, so let's go take a look. I still have this fenced off in case some of the rebel chickens get out of their electrified fencing and decide that they want to go back to the garden because that's where they just were and they have a very strong instinct to stay in the same spaces. So I have the main garden fence and this really big fence around it is a 10 foot deer fence which they're not flying over that <laughs> but they can find little weak spots in the gate or the fence or whatever and then I also have another premier one fence so they have to get past their one fence through the gate over another fence to get to my food and so far <laughs> that has cut them out. I have four rows in various degrees of being planted out. I have some brassicas at the very far end, half a row of potatoes which at the moment just looks like a bunch of dirt because they haven't really sprouted yet. There are some artichokes, celery, and a little bit of lettuce slash spinach over here and then a row of onions which also looks like nothing because they're so tiny. Not exactly enough to do a full garden tour but to start. I personally prefer to start my onions from seeds instead of using onion sets, so there are 300 very, very tiny onions in this row. I did about two thirds yellow onions because that's what I usually cook with, and then I did a handful of red onions as well. This time I got the right variety, so the first year I was here, <laughs> I planted long day onions because I had the same seed that I had when I was in Colorado. And in North Carolina, you need short day onions because the day length doesn't change as much in the summer because of the latitude, the whole thing. So I had the wrong seeds the first year. So I got onions, but they were tiny. And then last year, I had the brilliant idea of using my onions as companion plants, and I put them on the very edges of the beds. And then the weeds killed all of my onions because they're not very good at competing against the weeds. So this year, I gave them their own row. There is a little bit of garlic at the end. I don't think that will do them in. 
I made sure to mulch them first. They've got a nice cozy bed of mulch. I've actually even been supplemental watering them, which is not normally something that I do with my garden. I am so determined to actually have an onion harvest this year. And if something goes wrong with these, yeah, I don't know what I'm gonna do. These artichokes are in my food garden space, but I'm actually growing these for flowers. Artichoke flowers and cardoon leaves are really, really beautiful, I think, in floral arrangements. And I'm messing around with some cut flower projects this year. So that's why these are here. And I just didn't have room down by the house, which is my flower garden area. So they get some primo space in the food garden. And who knows, I might harvest a handful to eat too. And this celery looks so good. I planted this out almost a week ago and I feel like it's grown so much. I also have some spinach starts and some small butter crunch lettuce starts that I haven't quite mulched yet. And I also threw down some mixed lettuce green seeds, however you say that. I <laughs> did a couple different packets of those. They haven't sprouted yet, so it just looks like dirt, um, but take my word for it. And I think this might be the only evidence that I have planted potatoes here. But this whole bed, all the way up to there. So this whole area is all Yukon gold potatoes. I did save a handful of seed potatoes from my harvest last year, but that's mostly, I'm gonna say, 60% seed potatoes that I bought this year. I chitted them all, so I cut them up as small as I reasonably could and made sure they all had eyes. Planted them out, I I think there's approximately a hundred in there, which is way more than I've grown before, but I really enjoyed being able to store potatoes easily in the kitchen, reach for it as a supplement to a meal that's homegrown and really delicious. So I'm doubling down or tripling down <laughs> on potatoes this year, and I really hope that I get a good harvest. And then the crops that I always have such a hard time getting to harvest stage. I have all different kinds of brassicas in here. There's some purple cabbage, there's some romanesco, brussels sprouts, napa cabbage, rapini, broccoli, and I always have such a hard time with these. Either the chickens break in, actually I had a sheep break in like a week ago and decimate a couple brussels sprouts. Most survived, it's okay or the cabbage moths and cabbage worms just absolutely demolish them. So right now it's the season that the cabbage worms aren't out. I, that doesn't hit until like June 1st, pretty much. So I have another month or so for these to grow and to produce something before I'll have to cover them with Agrabon. I had some Agrabon covering over it at first, just to protect it in case, and it was getting really, really hot and it was making things bolt, so. I took it off for now and I'm just gonna see what happens. One of these days, I'll figure out the brassica harvesting. And then back here, past the far side, so past the uh, deer fence in this garden, it's a little like triangle area on the corner of my property. And I decided that I'm going to turn that into an orchard space. I originally wanted to do that closer to the house, kind of on the slope between the garden and the house down there, because there's a, a big elevation change. And I can't do much with that slope. So I thought that I would cut down the weeds and the shrubs, invasive stuff that's over there and replace it with, you know, peach trees, apple trees, all that sort of thing. And then I started doing it and realized how much time that's gonna take to tame because it's so crazy. And then I was up here one day looking at this and I thought, hmm, that space looks a lot easier to cut some trees down, throw up a fence to keep the sheep out and plant some fruit trees. So I took a couple hours, I cut down a bunch of um, beech trees. It's all American beech back there which is a good tree, but can also become a weed if there's too many of them. So I cut down the American beeches that were over there. I did leave a few up front just because they would destroy the fence if I took them down. And I have since thrown a few bare root peach trees in there. They were on sale at a local nursery, and so I grabbed them. And I do also have a couple more peach trees that I got in pots that need to go up there that I just haven't gotten to yet. That'll be a little orchard slash food forest area, but it won't look like much probably until next year when I can invest more money, more time in putting some actual fruit trees up there. And then on the other side of the garden, 
there is something totally new that I haven't showed you yet. So let's go look at it. These are beehives, but they're not the traditional Langstroth hives that you tend to see beekeepers use. These are actually called Layens, L-A-Y-E-N-S. If I had to oversimplify them, I would call them a really deep horizontal hive, basically. And they are empty right now, but I am getting a package of bees on Friday. So one of them will be full, and then the other one, I will either try to catch a swarm <laughs> with all my free time, <laughs> or I will take a split if and when it's appropriate from that first hive. The second one is just to kind of have a backup because it's not like I can run to my local bee supply store and get another hive or more frames if I need them. And so I wanted to have a just-in-case hive. I stuck them over here because it's kind of this dead space between the garden fence and then the perimeter electric fence. There's not really a whole lot I can do with that space. It's not like I'm gonna set up a really tiny paddock in there for the, the sheep to get in there. So I'm just gonna throw up some extra line from like that T post over to this post over here on the garden. It'll keep the sheep out of there because the sheep would get interested and potentially knock it over. And then I have this perimeter fence around the entire pasture that is in theory rated for bears. And I did that because I knew that I would wanna get bees soon and I didn't want to have to redo infrastructure when I got a new animal, so I just rated it for the most intense thing that I would need, and hopefully it'll work. I think that's all of the updates <laughs> so far, but to keep you guys updated on what's coming soon, I'll get those bees. It should be three days from now, and I'm gonna have my beekeeper friend help me install them and make sure I don't make any stupid mistakes <laughs> and I should also be getting some new laying hen chicks I get a new order every year just to keep the flock fresh and replace any birds that I may have lost through predators and then if I have extra I can always sell them to the community I should get those chicks in a few weeks I think I always order them so far in advance that I forget when they're actually coming but I think I got them for like the first weekend in May. So I need to get the brooder cleaned out and ready for them so that it's not a scramble, even though I'm sure it's gonna be a scramble at the last minute to get stuff set up for them anyway. It's just how it goes. I'm also realizing that I think I might actually already be past my last frost date. I wasn't anticipating that to happen until mid-May, which is a month from now. I was expecting to have four extra weeks to get my stuff together, to get my seeds started and to a place where they can be transplanted out. I deal with a lot of pest issues when I try to direct sow or transplant them out too early. So I like to give them a really healthy head start getting them started in indoors and then transplant them out when they're a little hardier and have a jump start on the pests. So that's gonna be a huge focus for me. This next week, probably the week thereafter, is gonna be getting seeds started and then transplanting out whatever is ready to go out so that I can have those trays back, I can have that real estate back on the seed starting rack. So, I'm gonna be busy to say the least. But the flip side of that is that I might be getting food out of the homestead garden a whole lot sooner than I thought I would this year. And that is an exciting prospect. So I'm not gonna complain about the time crunch of a schedule. I'm gonna look at the silver linings and be grateful for that. That is all I have for you all for today. I'll see you next time.